Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be doing an air check on uh, parts of a 6L80E. So we have the assembled pump, 35R drum, 456 drum, and the 456 clutch hub. And I'm actually doing this video in response to a request from a forum member from uh, one of the, uh, you know, one of the um, GM uh, tech forums that I frequent. And uh, he has, you know, his whole setup just like this posted a YouTube video asking me my opinion on the results of his air check and so instead of just you know typing out a response I figured well um, have a ton of video in a little while Lyle and I kind of assemble the same parts and do the exact same thing so that he has something to compare uh, and contrast his air check directly with so uh, that's what we're doing today um, so what we're going to do is test the 1234 clutch the 35 arc and the 456 clutch and we're also going to test the compensator feed system or at least the parts of it that are here on the bench and so um, like any clutch pack and any transmission uh, you want to hear a nice firm apply and you know, like a whoop and then a release of air and that's what we're looking for now the story with this thing is um, it is a core uh, nothing's new here I mean you know we're dealing with uh, clutches ceiling rings lift seals and you know everything else it's got about 80 85 thousand miles on it and uh, the original failure was, well, just like the majority of them, the uh, torque converter went and the 3.5R clutch um, is starting to go because the drum's leaking at the base. Um, this is a 2011 model year unit, meaning it has the second design um, stator where there are support O-rings underneath and then uh, over top of them are the actual ceiling rings. And that's a much better design. It cut down a lot on the cross leaks that were happening with the uh, earlier design between the 1.2.3.4 and the 3.5R clutch. So, um, you know, I think GM addressed that problem adequately there. All right, uh, so we'll test each clutch pack, kind of, you know, compare and contrast the uh, apply and release between them because they're going to be uh, each of them a little bit different. And then uh, we'll test the compensator feed, and there's a certain way that we want to do that so that we can, you know, obtain valid results. And if you're not familiar with the compensator feed system is or you've never heard of it, um, and I'll do a whole separate video that goes into the weeds, but long story short, uh, this system is, you know, intended to manage um, the apply and release sequencing of all the clutch packs inside the transmission uh, during the course of operation. Um, it's responsible for the timing of that ap the application and the release. Um, it's responsible for uh, managing feel, so you don't want shifts that are too harsh right you know you don't want any bang shifts but you don't want anything overly soft either and then it's also responsible for mitigating centrifugal apply for all of the uh, front clutch packs so your forward clutch in the case of when the vehicle is in reverse or in neutral and then your 35R um, clutch and your 456 clutch uh, the 26 and the low reverse clutch they don't really rotate they're in the center support and that just sits in the case but anytime you have clutches that are in rotating assemblies like a drum or something um, there's always the risk of centrifugal apply. So uh, in older transmissions, you have um, accumulators and then you have traditional return spring assemblies. Uh, these transmissions use a combination of apply and balance pistons, uh, Belleville style return plates, and um, uh, you know, compared with valving, you know, uh, hydraulics and the valve body, and to some extent the pump to manage all of that activity that's going on inside the case so uh, anytime you have like six eight ten you know speeds you know greater than that of say four or even five a compensator feed system is the most efficient um, uh, method for achieving all of those things you know while not having a transmission that's you know 20 feet long so Anyway, uh, let's go ahead and start with the one, two, three, four. So what we're looking for is very robust apply, no hissing, and then a nice um, abrupt release once we cut off the air source. All right, so again, 80,000 mile old lip seals, uh, everything is good, and um, we have no instances of hissing coming from deep within inside this drum. That's what you want to hear. You, you don't want to hear any kind of hissing. 
All right, 3.5R is gonna sound markedly different because it does have um, bleeder mechanisms to vent excess fluid um, when the 3.5R clutch is not scheduled to come on. So again, preventing centrifugal apply. Uh, this drum also leaks at the base welds. I have a separate video on showing you how to test for that. You just you know put a, a, a test tool in there and then you smear the base welds with a little bit of transmission fluid. Then you look for all the bubbles as you're putting air into that circuit. So 3.5R. Okay, and what you want to do, and I should have done this for the one, two, three, four. I'll go ahead and, uh, and do that once I'm done this. But you want to put your finger here, and what you're, you know, um, wanting to feel for, I should say, not wanting to feel, is air forcing its way out of this circuit when you're putting air into this circuit. Okay, I don't feel any air there, so we'll go back to the one, two, three, four, and we'll put our thumb on the three, five R. Okay, no air is coming out of here, and that's exactly what you want. If you have air coming out of here, then that means you have a cross leak, and in the older first design stators, this was very common. And if you had like tie-ups or bind-ups or um, stack shifting, what you would do is you would drop the valve body complex, you know, Tecum valve body and all that stuff, get it out of the way, and then you would put air into this circuit and this circuit and look for fluid spraying out of the other one adjacent to it. So you put air in here, and fluid and air is coming out of here, you know you have a cross leak and the trans has to come out. All right, now we'll do four, five, six. So I gotta hold my nozzle because it's this is a you know total piece of shit. But um, again, same deal. You don't wanna hear any air um, coming from deep within inside this drum. It needs to be nice, robust apply and then firm release. Okay, and you can take the hub out, and for both of these clutches, you can grab the 3.5R clutch, put air in it, make sure first you can move the frictions around, you know, just, you know, make sure they're not bound up, you, you need to have clearance obviously in the drum, okay, and then when you put air in it, try to move the frictions again. If you can move those frictions when you're charging this circuit, then there's obviously a problem and you need to, you know, uh, go find and fix it. Okay, so we'll do the four, five, six. All right, nice, robust apply. All right, so to test the compensator feed system, you'll want your hub in here. Just make sure it's fully seated. You don't need your sun gear and your front planet. I mean, you can put them in there too if you want, but you know, they're not sealing anything. I mean, they, they would just be there. Um, you know, sometimes I'll stick them in there and then like I'll literally forget they're there. I'll yank this out and then like, you know, the sun gear will go flying. But um, I always keep them out because uh, I, I literally did that one time and I felt stupid. Um, so what we're gonna do is we wanna make sure um, when we test the compensator feed system, we wanna make sure that it is capable of um, uh, um, adequate retention. So air is going to be a proxy for fluid. Uh, we don't want to see any kind of leaks or, or any sort of weakness within this compensator feed circuit. All right, because weakness in the circuit always shows up as various types of drivability symptoms like I mentioned earlier. You know, uh, late harsh up shifts, down shifts, bumpy shifting, uh, it'll feel jerky. Uh, sometimes it'll be intermittent, uh, if the, you know, based on the progression of the wear, uh, it'll become chronic. And then eventually it'll actually cause, you know, one or more applied elements to burn up. So if you start feeling that way, or, you know, I should say when, <laughs> when you start, um, you know, experiencing those drivability symptoms, then uh, the first thing you'll want to do is, um, you know, take the, uh, uh, take the pan off, take the valve body complex down and test the compensator feed circuit here. And, you know, I'll talk through how to do that when the case is fully assembled and or when the trans is in the vehicle. But when you have it like this, uh, what you want to do, you want to put air here. Okay, you put your air source right here in this port and then take a pinky finger or a ring finger and stick it right at the base here um, in the snout of the intermediate shaft. And then what you're going to do is when you put air in here, um, I'm going to release this nozzle. I'm going to keep the nozzle on the port and then I'm going to release my finger and I want to hear a bunch of trapped air kind of whooshing out of the top of uh, the shaft, okay? 
So we'll go put air. And when you do this, by the way, these drums will jump around a little bit, okay? Okay, so we have our air charge. Now I'm gonna release the nozzle. And I have some air coming out of the top of that shaft. So we'll do it again. All right, just like that. Now, if you do this and you don't plug this, well, that happens, okay? Everything likes to jump around. Jump around, jump around, jump up, jump up, and get down, okay? For those of you that are mid to late or late Gen X, House of Pain, um, you know? So anyway, I know it sounds dumb, but every time I put one of these you know, together and I go through this test, that stupid song, uh, you know, starts popping in my head. All right. Now, if you weren't getting any air coming out of here at all, then what you'll want to do is just take everything back apart and try to figure out, you know, where the leaks, um, you know, may be coming from. Uh, one thing I will point out, and this is maybe not as well known, um, but uh, when it comes to one-piece Teflon ceiling rings, um, brand new ceiling rings versus ceiling rings that are healthy but otherwise seasoned, in other words, used ceiling rings like what's on uh, you know, this turbine shaft, uh, brand new ceiling rings out of the package are not going to air check 100%. All right? It is almost never the case. There is always going to be a little bit of leakage because those ceiling rings haven't gone through a heating and cooling cycle where they're expanding, then they're, you know, cooling back down and shrinking, then expanding, um, you know, so-called seasoning and or breaking in, if you will. All right. So every once in a great while, when you put a transmission together and, you know, it goes back on the road for the first time, the first drive cycle might, um, you know, shifting might be a tad bumpy. Okay. Just a little bit and then it'll smooth out. Um, and what that usually is, is ceiling rings breaking into their respective surfaces, going through that first uh, set of heating and cooling cycles, um, and, you know, ultimately sealing against, you know, whatever inner diameter that they're, you know, supposed to be sealing against. So, if you get a little bit of hissing, just a little bit, all right, we're talking a very tiny, almost imperceptible amount, um, you know, I would chalk it up to that. All right, 4L60Es, 4L80s, 6Ls, um, you know, Ford, Dodge, Chrysler, uh, you know, um, Nissan, Toyota, anything that uses one-piece Teflon ceiling rings, um, you know, that rule is going to be applicable. 204Rs, if you're doing the uh, 4L80 Teflon ceiling rings on the center support, now uh, they will leak, and you will, you know, may be led to believe that you did something wrong or they're no good. Uh, that's not the case. It's just the nature of the, um, the material. All right, um, that is the testing and evaluation of the front of a 6L transmission on the bench, um, fully assembled pump, fully assembled 3.5R drum, 456 drum, and uh, you know 456 clutch hub. So we tested the 1234 clutch, the 3.5R and the 456 clutch, and we also tested the compensator feed system. Now, once you have this in the vehicle, fully assembled, um, you know, I should say actually fully assembled on the uh, bench still or on your fixture, um, you're going to test this again. And, you know, nothing's going to be jumping around, or at least it shouldn't be when the case is fully assembled. But what you should experience is when you release that nozzle, a whole bunch of air should be whooshing out of this compensator feed circuit. You know, all of that trapped air that you charged into that circuit should become whooshing right out at you. If it doesn't, if you get little to nothing, then there's something wrong, okay? You should always experience some sort of trapped air forcing its way out for maybe one one thousandth, maybe one two one thousandths um, before the circuit goes dead, all right? So anyway, uh, that's air checks. I uh, hope this was helpful and, uh, you know, to the um, individual that requested, you know, my opinion on the matter. I hope this was helpful for you, 
And um, if you have any questions, obviously go ahead and leave them below. Or you know, if you're interacting with me on the forum, you know, either start a thread or post them in one of my 6L80 info threads, and I will respond as soon as I can. As always, thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. And if you haven't subscribed already, please do so. I'll be putting out a lot more 6L80, uh, 6L90 videos in the near future. So if you subscribe and you hit the bell, you'll get notified when those videos become available. Thank you again. Enjoy the rest of your day or evening, and we'll see you in the next video.